you know when you're bored and you think too much that's what happened to me today and that's why I'm here making this video I've just been thinking about um, all the car buying mistakes that I made um, how I could have avoided them if I was able to but you know it happened it happened there's nothing really that I can do now apart maybe from like selling the car or something like that um so yeah we'll come to this video just gonna go through all of the car buy mistakes that i made when buying this car it's my first car and honestly i have i have excuses and i feel like i'm not wrong i could have done better but i feel like i'm not wrong you know um so yeah let's get into it um the first mistake that i made um was being in a rush i was in a rush to have this car by my 22nd birthday so i was busy doing my license around november and my birthday is on the 19th of november so i went to have my license um a few days before my birthday so i can get this car hopefully on the same day um as my birthday or a day before or a day after but i just wanted to it to be at that moment where it's like my birthday i'm celebrating my 22nd birthday and i have a car now right so cool yeah i was in a rush um the same saturday that i got my license i called the dealership to say listen i'm running late can someone please wait for me i'm gonna be there in 20 minutes and they were like okay fine there's a salesman that's waiting for you you just need to come and then view the car i already knew what car i wanted it was this ford focus st3 i've been eyeing it um apart from other cars like the Renault clio and the kia rio um this is the car this is the other car that i eventually like was set on that i want this car and i'm gonna get it so cool i go there i view the car um the salesman told me that i could not test drive it on that day which is fine it was like yeah they closed so the dealer doesn't allow them i mean the, the bank doesn't allow them to take out the cars um after they have closed and then that i'm gonna get a chance to trust drive the car on monday um which was fine with me like was not really really like a huge flag or anything like that cool um monday comes by this time i've already made my application mind you I have already made my finance application to get the car. Um, I have not touched off the car. I have not done a decor report or anything of that sort. I've just looked at the car with my uncle. Uh, we looked under, uh, it's not leaking oil, uh, it's not leaking oil. Ah, okay, it's good then. Yeah, put in my application. Monday, he, he comes, um, he says to me that, you know, your application has been approved um i'm coming with the car for you to test drive it and then you can you know um choose whether you want to get the car or not and by that time remember i had just gotten my license on saturday so i was really nervous about driving in all honesty you know i didn't grow up in a family where we had like a bunch of cars laying around and we could just drive them i only learned how to drive when i was doing my license so when the car came i was nervous to drive it uh, and then i asked my cousin um who has a car to come and test drive the car for me so in in my sort of like sense that was you know good enough for someone in the family to test drive the car tell me how it feels um cool but my cousin came drunk he came drunk and so he couldn't test drive the car so what ended up happening is the salesman drove the car he took us for like a joy ride, you know. You could feel that this car is powerful. There were no funny noises, no squeaks, rattles, or anything funny happening. So it's like, yeah, uh, it seems good enough. I uh, will take the car. Uh, he drove back with the car because I had not signed any papers or anything. And then on the next day, which was Tuesday, I went to the dealership and then, yeah, signed the papers. Um, I got the car and all was done. And that was two days before my birthday so by the time my birthday came i had a car which was nice it was a dream fulfilled um you know goal fulfilled or whatever i had a car but then along the way i had made 
a couple of mistakes and that was just the second or the first um just the two mistakes that i made there you know net test not test driving the car um so yeah another one that i made was during my financial deal there that one was very bad because it's something that's gonna stick with me for as long as i decided to keep this car so i had no knowledge about um repo rates uh, prime lending rates or anything like that so when i went to buy this car i had a budget in mind that this is how much i'm willing to pay for this car right and then when the salesman came on monday he did come with like a piece of paper after we had done our test drive um he pulled out a piece of paper out of his um though he was wearing like a t-shirt and then it had like a pocket here he pulled out a piece of paper and i'm just like ah oh, you can't remember my interest and my uh, installment ah oh, come on my guy <laughs> but um i guess i was just being safe so he pulled out that paper he looked at it and he's like yeah so this is your interest rate uh the lowest that we could find for you and this is your monthly installment if you choose to go with this interest rate um and i was like okay this thing is less than what it's less than what i had planned to pay so i'm safe i'm fine um i will take the car i'm good but what i did not have much knowledge about then was that your interest rate doesn't have to be high right obviously it depends on your lending history if you have um done like major loans or anything of that sort previously but by that time the only thing that i had i think i had a credit card by then and then i also had like a phone contract so those were like um the only two um sort of like ongoing credit things that i had then so in my mind then that interest rate was good enough um for as long as it gave me one an installment that was less than what i had anticipated to pay and also um an interest rate that i was willing to pay and also there was no balloon payment on my car so for me that was good enough to say i'm taking the car um it's less than what i had anticipated to pay um so i'm good like there's honestly no blunder like there was no um inconvenience in my financial life then before we can't petrol and anything of that sort there was really no financial um uh, blunders when it came to what i had been offered to pay so fine um yeah so fine then like i take the car but what i really learned later on was that the price the interest rate could have been lower had i one negotiated for it and also um yeah like I, I guess i could have just negotiated for it for it to be much lower or closer to prime and you know it really sucks when you later learn that you've been not sort of like it's almost like you've been screwed over uh that's just how it feels like like you you have chats with your friends yeah this is how much i'm paying for my car this was my interest rate and they're like oh dude we got prime some say we got prime minus one and then you were there sitting like hey which one is the swan now because i got my boy i'm sitting on i'm i'm sitting on like a digit um a digit more than prime like a few digits more than prime right and it was like um an eye opener then and only then um but then it's fine um again there was not really like a financial mishap to me but it just really sucks that i could have gotten you know i could be paying less for the car essentially and the other things that you know come to mind with my financial deal was that i was not really involved with making the deal happen so just gave my um salesman you know the the whole like task to get the deal for me so obviously he goes to the bank so he does whatever he does and then he comes back to me and say is this the lowest we have for you so i did not even ask what were the other other banks offering um and the other thing was that like my salesman added you know all these policies on my financial so all these extra charges i was not really 
much involved. Now he added like a he added, you know, the paint cover, pothole cover, warranty. I thank God that he added warranty on my deal because that saved me a few times. But then you know he just added all these things um on my deal, which were like those three policies, warranty, paint cover and pothole cover and so far i've only used the warranty it's not to say that I, um i will never use the other two but it's like uh, meh my in my my installment would have been much lower if those things were not there and so far i have not needed them so yeah and then yeah you know that just goes with like the whole finance thing um only later learned that you know you just have to be cautious with salespeople that they will do all these things to increase the commission on the car the commission that they get and so the more money that they can finance the more commission they get so if they can add pothole covers and whatnot to the finance deal that's like maybe like a thousand or like 500 rand extra commission to to what they, they're gonna get so they're obviously just going to add those things and if you're not open enough to look at your finance deal and say i don't want that thing there it's going to be there and it's going to add to how much interest you're paying on the loan and how much commission they get on the car right um but that's fine we over that now um yeah um but to all new car buyers what i would say is whenever you are buying a car right one of the good things that I did out of all of this um, situation, uh, one of the good things that I did was I went on vehicle check to see the I believe, and then I pulled a report on the car. So any accident, accident history, finance history, and there I was able to see that okay, this car was financed from this time to this time with so and so. Um, that's one of the good things that I was able to do when it came to this car. So to say to you that whenever you are in the market for a car, take your time, don't rush, pull all of these reports on the car, take the VIN numbers to the, to the dealers, the original dealers. So if you are buying um, a Hyundai, take the VIN number of the car you are buying to Hyundai, have them check the service history and whatnot. And this is one of the things that I did not check on the car, the service history. My service history has a huge gap on it um, from some period and then in that period the mileage on the car almost tripled from the original mileage but there's no history to say this car was serviced um, by Ford here and there no there's nothing so that's one of the mistakes that I made so whenever you're buying a car take your time right pull the VIN number pull the service history of the car um yeah do your decor reports if it's a used car it's really beneficial and some um dealers offer it like we buy cars they they do give you a decor report you don't have to request for one to be made um and that's just really beneficial to anyone who's looking to buy a car and then the other thing interest rates try to negotiate for a lower interest rate be involved in the sales process of your car because if you're not then you know the dealers just or the dealer or the salesmen are just going to add a bunch of things to your um, finance deal that may not be beneficial to you but they increase the commission so be very much involved in the process of um, applications made request to see all the offers you have you have received from the banks don't buy there this is the lowest we could get for you story um, do that and you are gonna be fine all right so what did I miss yeah I think that's almost about it you know be wary buy from the original approved dealers if you can but even them they can be shady too so just be careful out there it's a dog eat dog world enjoy your car let me play with the pipes <laughs> 